Hey there, Magic the Gathering player and potential new Force of Will player. My name is Jeremy Franklin, and I'm so glad you decided to stop in to see us here at Ruler School. You may have heard the term Force of Will and just thought about the Magic card, but there's actually also a card game called Force of Will TCG, and there's a lot more to the game than just the name. We've been seeing a large influx of Magic the Gathering players into the Force of Will community as of late to give the game a try, so we wanted to make a video telling you a little bit more about the game to see if it's something that you want to jump in on as well. I'm going to go ahead and slide our chalkboard down here and tell you everything you need to know about Force of Will and why it's a game that you should be picking up alongside Magic. Class is in session. Brought to the United States in 2015, it's had its share of ups and downs over the past six years. But at its core, Force of Will is a game that builds upon the framework of Magic, makes some tweaks and additions, and uses that to create a game that's very engaging and has intricate tempo and playstyle. The ruler system and the resources being in a separate deck are just some of the things that separate Force of Will from Magic, and I think you will find that there are even more enticing elements not just in the gameplay itself, but also what you can expect from Force of Will experience as a whole. Besides, if you know Magic, you already know about 80% of how to play the game, so what do you have to lose? Let's cut to the chase and get the similarities out of the way. First, both games are based around resources. For Magic, you have lands, and in Force of Will, there are Magic Stones. Magic Stones work the same way as lands, except we keep them in a separate deck. That means we never have to worry about land flooding or land drought. Sure, the stones we hit are shuffled and random, so maybe we get color screwed, but it's much less likely than in Magic. That alone can be pretty enticing if you're a player who's ever lost to not seeing a land until turn 6, right? I've done demos for Force of Will at Gen Con and other major conventions, and almost every Magic player I've ever talked to has told me that this element of Force of Will is one of the things that first catches their attention and makes them want to play, so I'm hoping it does for you too. Force of Will also uses the exact same reaction system as Magic, the stack, only we call it the chase in our game. It operates on the exact same principles, so nothing new for you to learn there. We're also a life point based game, only our life starts at 4000 instead of 20, but that's mainly due to the game's origins in Japan. So you can essentially say we start at 40 life, because no cards ever do anything in those last two places. Cards and costs have the same timing just like magic, with instance being relegated to the quick cast keyword found on certain cards. The best parts of Force of Will though come from the differences. Rulers are essentially this game's commanders, but unlike commanders, they all do something at every point of the game. They also don't contribute to any form of color locking, so any idea you can come up with in any color combination is fair game. Here's an example of a ruler. Not only does it have abilities on this side, but you can also judgment it and flip it into the field as a unit, and it becomes a whole different card. Rulers bring an absolutely unique deck building and playline experience that takes the idea of Commander to a whole new level and creates opportunities for some truly unique and engaging 1v1 experiences. The other most game-changing difference between the games though is combat. Unlike Magic, combat in Force of Will is more dynamic and fluid. Force of Will has no shadow blocking, so if a blocker dies, the damage goes through, and on top of that, combat is always one versus one for creatures, or in Force of Will they're called resonators. You can not only attack your opponent, but also any Resonator or J Ruler that's rested. So this adds a layer to board control unheard of in Magic, and creates truly in-depth combat scenarios that are engaging and exciting. And not only that, but combat can take place as many times as you want during a turn, providing you have attackers to use. This means you could start your turn by attacking with one creature, then play a couple other Resonators or cards, then go into attack again with another card that could be used that turn. We still have summoning sickness to consider, so don't worry, you'll still have to take your time. Combat as a whole is one of the defining differences between the game, and it's something that many Magic players have shared as one of their favorite parts of the game. Don't just take my word for it though, here are some of our players and their thoughts. My name's Taylor, I've been playing Magic for about 8 years, and Force of Will for about half of that. Force of Will kinda offers exactly what most Magic players want which is a consistent, fun game without needing to worry about being mana-flooded or mana-screwed. I really love how drastically different combat feels in Force of Will as well, with Resonators attacking and blocking individually, and being able to attack Rested Resonators and J-Rollers, and it makes players need to think more tactically about how they choose to attack and defend. One of the great things about Force of Will that I absolutely love is the fact that combat is much more like a puzzle. Um, there's a lot less of... I swing in and I know exactly how my opponent is going to block because 
of the way that um, combat works, you have an opportunity to, you know, attack with something, and then you can play another creature that may have swiftness, and then attack again, and it, and it adds another level of complexity to the game that I absolutely love. We could talk forever about the game's mechanics, but you aren't here for a tutorial. You want to know what else is bringing Magic the Gathering players to the game, and thankfully I can help with that too. First off, card real estate, design, and approach. Here's your standard Magic card, I'm sure you're familiar with it. There have been tweaks and changes over the years, but it's kept to a pretty similar formula. Anytime Magic breaks this mold and extends the artwork in any way, the Magic players I talk to have always been excited about it. And who wouldn't be? More art is better, right? Well, here's a standard Force of Will card. Notice anything different? So much more artwork featured everywhere on the card. And here's that same card featured in its full art form. Every card in Force of Will that you would be buying to get into the current competitive format can come like this. And you always get a foil like this in every pack. While I can agree that art style on some cards might not be as appealing, the simple fact that the art is featured so prominently is a wonderful bonus. Oh yeah, and by the way, Force of Will has God Packs, where every card in the pack can be a full art foil. Talk about a great feeling when cracking through your set release packs. Speaking of cracking product, how many boxes full of chaff commons and uncommons have you piled up trying to hunt down that one rare or super rare you really needed from that set? Probably more than you care to admit, right? Well, say goodbye to that with Force of Will. Sets in Force of Will are only 100 to 110 cards, so they're much more streamlined to directly support the rulers introduced in that set, alongside with some generic support and splashable support cards and concepts. This means less hunting and more playing. On average, five boxes of a new Force of Will set will get you an entire playset of everything, with going for the full case guaranteeing the god pack. The reason for this is because the pull ratios in Force of Will boxes are insanely consistent and profitable. Just take a listen to this from one of our recent additions to the community, a 20-year Magic veteran. So I found Force of Will actually through a friend. We were mutually discussing the fact that we were uh, getting fed up with playing the same old card game, and he suggested that I try it. So I picked up um, a couple boxes, just some stuff that was cheap, but then I also wanted to grab one of the new ones. And at the time, the newest box was uh, Magic Stone War Zero. And I was so blown away by, I mean, it was a about 120 for me. And I ended up tallying up my rare value and it was over $300. And I was so blown away by that, that I actually got inspired to make booster box opening videos myself and even start a Force of Will YouTube channel. And my, yeah, overall, my experience has been incredible because the gameplay is obviously fantastic, but it's also the card stock is so high quality. The card artwork is so beautiful that it's become my new favorite really quickly. This experience is not unusual. In fact, it's pretty much the norm. Almost every box of Force of Will is guaranteed to have more value in singles in it than what you paid for the box. The singles market in Force of Will is also constantly improving and stabilizing at higher price levels, but at no point has it ever been out of control to the point of being unobtainable. And as more players like you enter the game, this will get better. That's great news, not only for those of you who wish to buy product to get what you need and sell extras, but also those of you who just buy the singles you need to play at events. Take this list from the most recent GP with an invite to Worlds this past April. If you bought this deck at base rarity, it would be just under $300 for the entire set and you would be ready and set to go. That kind of price for a deck like this is actually on the higher end of what we've seen in previous years in terms of what decks have been winning events and how much it's cost to build them if you were just paying them as singles. So it's very easy and affordable to play this game, even at a very high competitive level. Product releases for Force of Will are also a lot less stressful overall. Each year there are four main sets that make up a cluster, as well as usually one supplemental product like a crossover or support set, and starter decks. Sets release every three months, so it's always easy to know what is coming and to prepare for the next set. Any exclusive promos or alt art promos that you might see in Force of Will are carried over to being participation prizes for both competitions at the major level or playing at your local store. You won't ever have to worry about your internet glitching out and missing on a super rare bonus set ever with Force of Will, and instead you can just focus on spending your time and enjoying the new products as they release, and picking up those nice bonus foils from your locals, or by playing in major events. 
Hey, I'm Squid.exe. I've been an MTG player for over 10 years now. I've PTQ grinded, I've invested, I've done pretty much everything that there is to do in Magic. Uh, it, it's actually a pretty exciting time for TCGs in general, and if you're just sticking to one game, you're honestly really limiting yourself. Forza of Will has a lot to offer, a lot of great interactions, a lot of amazing combinations, and go ahead and try it out. What do you got to lose? Okay, but games aren't all about mechanics and products. It's also about the community and the competition. Well, while Magic may have size, Force of Will has heart. The Force of Will community is engaging, supportive, and friendly to a fault. Players want to talk about the game, want to challenge each other in healthy ways, want to come up with cool ideas, and love seeing the cool ideas that other players come up with. Competitions for Force of Will feels like festivals, with players laughing and engaging in fellowship rather than focusing solely on their wins and losses. There is competition, of course, but Force of Will always makes it worth your time to even just show up, so it's easier to focus on the experience even if things aren't going your way. Once again, take this past April with the webcam GP that had a world championship invite on the line. Players showed up, paid 35 bucks, got at least $120 worth of promos, I know that's how much they're worth because that's how much I sold mine for, and a shot at $1,000 in cash and an invite to Worlds. I mean, can you really say that's bad? And it's the same whether you're in person or in online events. Future online events this year have already been announced, and they'll have the same pricing, same cash, and paid invites to the World Championships in Japan. How awesome is that? And that's just for the official events from the company. Stores and players have hosted online and in-person events for years, and they're always a good time like the 2019 Force of Will Festival in Michigan that we hosted. We had over 60 players show up from all over the United States and Canada just to spend a day playing the game they love with the community they're part of. We gave over $10,000 in cash and prizes away that day, but on top of that, every player walked away with a great memory and a great experience. I still get messages today talking about how much fun the Force of Will Festival was and asking me when the next one's gonna be. That's Force of Will. It's a community that competes rather than a competing community. Force of Will isn't going anywhere. If this isn't the time for you to try it out, I get it, and I appreciate you at least stopping in to hear what we have to say. I do think, however, that if you do decide to give it a shot, you won't regret it. The game has so much to offer at almost every level that training card game players look for in a game, and it can be a rewarding experience whether you pick it up on the side, or heavily invest and go all out like we've seen from some Magic the Gathering players in the community lately. Regardless, there's a place for you here in the community if you want it, and we look forward to getting to know you. Hi, my name is Matt Davis. I'm a new Force of Will player. I have been playing Magic the Gathering for quite some time. I started in 1995 and I attended a few Pro Tours and uh, dozens of Grand Prix. Eventually, I got attracted to Force of Will as a card game, primarily because of the art and because of the literary connections. The first sets of cards that I bought were Don Quixote, Merlin, Humpty Dumpty, Beowulf, and the Alice in Wonderland and Wizard of Oz cards. Of course, once I saw how the game functioned so smoothly and how easy it was to transition from Magic the Gathering to Force of Will, I began to invest much more in this wonderful game of Force of Will. My name is Rustin, and I've played Magic the Gathering for about a decade now. Like most people, a lot of my friends played Magic the Gathering, so I kind of just went along with it. When Force of Will started up, it was described to me as fairy tales fighting against Cthulhu, and that just sounded awesome. And the resources are in a separate deck, so if you ran a monocolor deck, you would never get mana screwed. And that piqued my interest. After playing a few games, I was hooked, and a little over half a decade later, I'm still playing it. If you want to learn more, there's links on the screen here to be able to take to our how to play video as well as how to get started here in 2021. Thanks again for watching, welcome to the community, and until we see you again, class dismissed.